Okay, so let's talk about pH. And pH, where we want to start, is the pH in French is puissance d'hydrogène, which, uh, if you'll excuse my bad French pronunciation, is uh, puissance. Its translation is going to be power. And power in the exponent sense. So, and then it's going to be the power. D is, stands for of and hydrogen. And because hydrogen is capitalized in French, we end up with P sub P with an H and a capital H. Um, so when I mean that, it, it is literally the exponent. If um, we look at, uh, and I should say the puissance de hydrogen uh, means the uh, hydrogen ion. So this is the hydrogen ion. So I'm going to look right here, H plus. And I use the square brackets for concentration. So this expression right here means concentration of hydrogen ion. And it comes with units too, and the units are molarity, so in molarity. And we don't have to worry too much about what molarity is, but uh, it does have units, so we'll mention them. I can put that in parentheses. For example, if I had a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the minus third, The equation for pH is going to be that pH equals the negative logarithm of the concentration of H plus. So what we can do is we can plug in, oh, and I forgot my units, molarity. I plug in minus log, I'll plug in my concentration here, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3, and uh, molarity. And if I do my pH, well, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, depending upon what kind of calculator you have, this will be a little different, remember. But for mine, it's 1.0. And we don't have to put in the O, but we do this time. Uh, times 10 to that, we hit the exponential button for me. And then those two little digits appear. I get 3 minus. And these are going to be all negative exponents, meaning that this uh, is a small number. So I've entered it in, then I'm going to hit the log button right here, and I get minus 3. And typically, uh, when we talk about pH, and we use a pH probe and a pH tester, which I've got right here, it has two decimal places, so we like to put two decimal places. Oh, I forgot, there's a negative here, so the pH is a positive number. It's plus 3, plus 3.00. And it is no accident that this exponent is exactly the pH. So, in fact, the exponent is related to the whole number, and the uh, number part is related to the decimal places when you take the logarithm of something. But uh, when it's 1.00, the number here, well, the 3 part, will be the number for the pH. It's a little different, though, if we have a concentration of H+, plus that equals, let's say, 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5th molarity. We plug this into our pH equation. And we get 3.6 times 10 to the 5 minus. Hit our log button. And this time I'll remember to leave out the negative sign. Uh, you can take it away by hitting plus minus. And I get 4.44. So they're not the same, but they're only one different. 
because I don't know how many times I've entered things wrong incorrectly into a calculator and it helps me to know that the pH that I get should be either the same number or uh, one smaller. Those are the only possible sources. And we'll talk more about that. We do have the pH equation right here. It is a log equation, which is something that we've worked with before. And we'll talk more about it coming up. Next, let's talk about what it is an acid or a base. And let's start with an acid. An acid is a substance that makes H plus hydrogen ions uh, in water. A substance that makes H plus hydrogen ions in water. And that's a, a good working definition right there. I wonder if I keep that right there, if it'll stay in focus. Um, and so for an example, our first example is going to be HCl. HCl, when dissolved in water, and the AQ means that it's dissolved in water. And I'm going to say all the names for these because the names are in the activity material questions. This is hydrochloric acid, so you might want to write that down. In fact, please do. All the names that I say. When it dissolves in water, it makes H+, which means hydrochloric acid is an acid. It's got acid right in its name. And it also makes something called the chloride ion, not that we care about it today. Uh, a second example is this compound, which is named acetic acid. A-C-E-T-I-C, -E acetic acid. Acetic acid is the acid in vinegar. And it is going to make H pluses. And something called an acetate ion, not that we care. And I've shown these two because these are the two types of acids that are available. You can see you can have an H in the front. And you'll see lots of acids that have H's in the front. But you'll also see COOH in the back. And in fact, uh, the more you look around, the more you're going to see this COOH group. Uh, the COOH group is in all amino acids. It is in a lot of the acids. In fact, all of the acids that are in coffee. Uh, and yes, so these are the two ways that scientists uh, almost universally note acids. I will show you what this COOH looks like when it's in a molecule. Um, and I'll draw this molecule. Just for demonstration purposes, you will not be asked to do this but it is useful information. Oh, I messed up, sorry. Here's that first CH3 group, and then there's what I'm calling a COOH in the back. It looks just like that. You've got a double bond to a carbon uh, from an oxygen and a single bond with an H down here. And we'll see that through some of the structures coming up. Um, yes, and so those are the two ways to find acids. Both of these kinds of acids make H pluses, and that is what an acid is. Two, a base. And there are no bases. Hmm, actually, that's not true. We're not going to talk much about the bases that are in coffee because coffee will turn out to be an acidic solution. A C I D I C. But a base is a substance that makes OH minus. In water. And OH minus is called the hydroxide ion. And 
uh, one substance that you'll have to know is sodium hydroxide. Please write its name on your notes too. And sodium hydroxide, which does dissolve in water, that's what the AQ for aqueous means, will make sodium ion plus hydroxide ion. And those two ions, well, we see are hydroxide. Um, and, but we're going to focus on acids today and in uh, pretty much everything we do. Um, now let's talk about some examples of acidic and basic foods. Well, we've got uh, limes, lemons, and oranges also not on the list, which would be right in here. And this is what you get for that. That's is called, uh, or one of the main acids is citric acid. And I'll go ahead and write that down for you. And it's a little unclear, but if this was a C, and this was a C, and this was a C, citric acid would have three COOH groups, which is true. And in fact, you can get three H pluses from this compound, although uh, that's a complicated story in itself. All we need to know is that because you can get H pluses from it, it is an acid. Uh, let's see, we've got um, most foods are acids, or most foods are acidic. As you can see from this list, although egg whites are basic, and that's about it. So uh, it turns out that um, most cleaners, though not all, are basic, and that one way to look at cleaning is you're doing a reaction or a neutralization between an acid and a base. So most cleaners are basic. And cleaning, one way of looking at it, much of it anyway, not all of it, cleaning is neutralizing the acids with bases. But, um, and oh, I did want to do some ones that I haven't done already. Um, well, let's actually, uh, soft drinks contain, they're, uh, they're bubbly. Those bubbles come from the fact that there's something called carbonic acid, which has the formula H2CO3. H2CO3, carbonic acid, please write that name down, does two cool things. First off, it makes H pluses because it's an acid. Yep. And uh, the aqueous there, again, means dissolved in water. Makes H pluses, therefore it's an acid. Uh, it also breaks down into carbon dioxide and H2O. And this carbon dioxide right here is the bubbles in soft drinks. So two things going on there with carbonic acid, which is pretty cool. And then I'll ask you to note, there's an H in the front right here. And without getting too tricky, I hope, This compound, which includes the uh, HCO3 minus, so this compound has uh, a, a common name called sodium bicarbonate. Please write that name down, sodium bicarbonate. And sodium bicarbonate is sold as baking soda. And baking soda also will spontaneously break down and make CO2. That's one of the reasons that uh, baked products with baking soda in it will bubble. You can also take uh, uh, baking soda and acetic acid in vinegar and make a volcano 
reaction, which we have done many times, my daughter and I, I'm happy to say. All right, um, let's keep going uh, for one more slide at least. More compounds of interest. So uh, a couple of them right here. Uh, let me check my notes. One is caffeine, and we're focusing on stimulants for a minute here. Caffeine uh, has this uh, structure right here where each of these little points are carbons. Not that that is something that you have to know, but it's useful information. And what I really want to point out about these is that caffeine, which is here, and theobromin, which is here, both are stimulants. One's in chocolate, one's in tea and coffee, and both look almost identical mo to molecule size. In fact, the only thing that's different is right here, you have an NH, and right here, you have an NCH3. And there's a whole multiple areas of science that just look at the shapes of molecules because shapes affect reactions. And especially when you're dealing with parts of the body. So uh, these um, will react in certain ways in your body that allow them to be stimulants. These two, not quite as similar, but nicotine and arecoline, which I have to say, I'm not sure if I'm saying that uh, last one correctly, uh, also have similar structures. You can see they're different by at least the CH3 group here, but they also appear different on the other side. Anyway, shape affects reactions. Um, and I think these are gonna be the only other uh, materials that I wanna talk about, the only other compounds of interest for now.